What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great, and I hope you are too. It's me, Kiki B. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plus Fallout 76. So, a few weeks ago, we were spitballing ideas over on Patreon, and the one that had the most interest was shelters. The Patreon family had a few questions about shelters, so I decided to turn it into a series, and today we're kicking that off with shelter building basics. While you have more freedom in shelters than you have in regular adventure mode camp building, the rules are not always super clear and are a little different compared to what we're used to above ground. So if you tried building in your shelter but maybe found it confusing, or if you haven't even started your foray into underground architecture yet, stick around, I've got you covered. Before we dive into that though, if you love what I do here and you'd like a more direct line to me, why not join our Patreon family? I do my best to answer as many questions as possible on YouTube, but sometimes they get buried in the sheer volume of comments or eaten by filters designed to keep spam and adult website links out of sight and out of mind. Patreon gives us an opportunity to really connect, not only one-on-one, -on -one, but also with a fantastic group of like-minded folks who love camp building just as much as you do. So if that sounds good to you, head on over to patreon.com slash kikibi or click on that link down in the description to find out more. And hey, you can even get your name in the credits of my videos so everyone will know just how awesome you are. And of course, join us over on Instagram at kikibiplays. We would love to see you there. So now let's get into everything that you need to know about building and shelters. So if you haven't claimed your free first shelter yet, what you need to do is head over to any train station and look for this cute little poster. Clicking on it will pop up a little dialogue box and start a quest for you, which will take you up next to Vault 51. It's a quick, easy little quest and that's all I'm going to say about it. Alternately, you can claim the shelter's poster for free from the Atomic Shop and place it down in your camp somewhere. Clicking on it in your camp will do the same thing and start you on the quest. Once you've done that, just head on over to the Shelters tab in your build menu and place your utility room entrance down. So now if you head on into your utility room, you'll find yourself in a two-room space that's just over one regular build story high. It's got some dim lighting and walls and floors and stuff. Over by the exit, you'll find the shelter control panel, which basically functions like a camp module with one major difference. You can use the control panel to enter build mode or repair things, but you can also use it to scrap everything in the shelter. So just, you know, be a little careful. So first up, what can and can't you build in a shelter? Well, you can build floors, walls, decor, prefabs, displays, shelter entrances, and all that good stuff. If it will physically fit in the shelter space, knock yourself out. The only things you can't build are things like allies, blueprints, some appliances, water sources, crops, and any resource collectors like a chicken coop or a collectron. There are also a couple of things that are exclusive to shelters. First up, we've got this lovely big vault door, which snaps into all the doorways in the vault style shelters. The second is the vault power bank, which is a very nice flat wall mounted generator that provides 12 power quietly, I might add, and looks pretty cool doing it. You can connect a wire to it and use conduits to run power just like you would with any other generator. One of the major differences when you're comparing camps to shelters is that obviously shelters have their own walls and floors. All the vault style shelters have also got snapping points built into the floors, positioned about half a floor in on all sides, where you can snap walls down for what I guess is meant to be easy building. These can be okay to use, but they do leave a lot of unused space around the sides of each room, and I honestly don't understand why literally anyone thought this was the way to go. It also leaves you unable to use any custom flooring, so if you go this route, you're stuck with the standard floors already in the shelter. One of the positive sides of using these snapping points, though, is that you have a corridor all the way around whatever you're building, where you can run wiring or hide things that you don't want out in plain sight. In the non-vault shelters, which so far consist of the abandoned mine, forbidden dig site, and missile silo shelters, there are no snapping points. You're free to build anywhere, any way you like. Now, one of my favorite features in shelter building is the toggle snapping button. Turning snapping off gives you a lot more options when it comes to putting in your own flooring, placing walls anywhere you want them, and a lot more. For example, you can toggle snapping off to place your own walls up against the existing shelter walls to cover them with pretty wallpaper. Just be careful not to get too close, otherwise these weird sticky-outy things on the walls will get in the way and you won't be able to get the walls where you want them. Okay, so you've got some walls built. Now what goes on top? Obviously, you can use roofs of whatever type will fit based on the size of your shelter. But you can also use floors, which is, I'm guessing, why they bothered making the undersides of these vault floors actually look nice. 
Floors in shelters don't have to be supported, so you can place or float them literally anywhere. Now for those of you who want some nice looking floors in their shelter, it's not too hard to put them in. All you need to do is toggle snapping off, and then you're going to set an upper floor on top of the existing floor. After you have that lined up however you want it, you can toggle snapping back on and snap your other floors to it. Just keep in mind that some floor decals, like puddles or painted stripes, might show up on top of your new floor, depending on the specific decal and the height of your floor. Now, once you've got yourself a nice room here with a little utility corridor all around, you might want to block off said corridor so visitors won't be looking at all the ugly stuff you want to hide. Understandable. The easiest way to do that is just by turning snapping off and putting a wall on each side of this entryway. Once you wallpaper it to match the rest, it will blend in really nicely. So now you've got the basics of shelter building down, there's way more interesting stuff you can do, like building lovely chevron walls without a blueprint, because in a shelter, it's as easy as just placing the different wall pieces. Just remember that to prevent those weird flickery overlaps that you get, the bottom ones have to be metal and the top pieces can't be metal, just to keep things nice and confusing and inconsistent for us all. And if you want to make corners with these, you have to use glass walls for the upper pieces on both sides of the corner, and then change them to the correct types after. If you don't have glass walls, just put a solid wall on the corner. Another fun, slightly more advanced thing you can do in shelters is building your own stairs out of floors. You can use small floor pieces to build whole staircases, or you can use full-size ones like this to create a few steps up to a raised platform, or whatever else you can think of. Now, when it comes to decor, there's not a whole lot to say. You can put stuff on the floor, you can float stuff in midair, you can merge stuff and then float it in midair. There aren't really a lot of limitations on decorating, and with a build budget that's about one and a half times the normal camp budget, you can do a lot of decorating. One thing you'll want to keep in mind here, though, is the toggle snapping option. A good rule of thumb is that if you want an object to touch something, like the floor or another object, it's easier with snapping turned on. If you want to float something very precisely, turn snapping off. In the case of wall decor, if you want it to actually stick on the wall, turn snapping on. If it's off, it will not attach to the wall and will try to go through the wall instead. It's really annoying. That's it from me today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to make sure that you are subscribed and you've turned on those channel notifications so you don't miss out on the next absolutely amazing video. If you enjoyed this and you're interested in supporting the channel, check out that Patreon link and join us over on Instagram while you're at it. And with that, folks, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.